Hey everybody, welcome to yet another Washington Football Maniacs video. Welcome to the channel if you're new here. Welcome back if you are a returning visitor. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel. Uh, your subscriptions really help this channel out. And with that said, let's get on with today's video. So, breaking news from yesterday. Well, not breaking from me, but big blockbuster trade, which certainly disappointed yours truly, but a lot of Washington Commanders fans in D.C. and everywhere else. Russell Wilson has been traded to the Denver Broncos. And the deal actually um, was involved with, uh, I'm trying to think of the whole entire deal. I know it was a couple of first round draft picks, a couple of uh, second round draft picks. I think it was a fifth round draft pick. And it was um, Drew Locke. It was a couple of other players as well. In exchange for uh, Denver getting Russell Wilson and a fourth round draft pick. And Washington, from what we understand, offered three first round draft picks. Um, I believe I want to say they may have also offered three second round draft picks. I'm a little fuzzy on that one. Um, and they were also willing to give up players as well. Now, there were some talks about possibly giving up Chase Young, but they were really hesitant on that, and I would have been extremely hesitant on giving up Chase Young as well. But Washington was definitely willing to deal. From what I heard, um, Washington's deal was probably just as good, if not better, than what Denver's deal was. It just it came down to Russell deciding where he wanted to go, and he chose Denver over Washington. Now, of course, Twitter verse was going crazy over all of this. They, you know, were saying that nobody wants to come to Washington, everybody hates Washington, or either, you know, um, the commanders, once again, they're trying to undercut everybody else. They're thinking that they can get all of these players for nothing without really even looking into seeing what the Washington Commanders offered. And, you know, I'm I'm stepping in and I'm saying, hey, look, they actually offered a really good deal. It just happened to be that, for one thing, Seattle did not want to trade Russell Wilson to, the, uh, to another NFC East team, or uh, not just the NFC East, but NFC in, in general. They did not want to trade him into the conference itself. They would rather him went to the AFC. And so they were not as much willing to deal him to another NFC team. And so they were more than happy to send him off to Denver. And that was the other thing. And two, you know, again, Russell, I think he liked the Denver area much better, even though he did grow up in Virginia. He said he loved D.C. Everybody felt, oh, you know, it's a shoe in Just offer him what he wants. Well, you can't really, I mean, you can offer him what he wants with monetarily, but just offer what Seattle wants, and then you have them. And I th honestly think Washington did that. They did everything they possibly could, and they did. They swung big, and, you know, some fans are going to sit there and say they didn't do enough. They did more than enough, folks. They really did. And you may want to sit there and down them and say they didn't do anything. Look at it. They did. They just didn't succeed. And, I mean, you know, it just didn't happen for them. Um, so, moving along, Washington no longer, of course, is going to be in a running for Russell Wilson. And we kind of expected this after Seattle pretty much said, we're not trading him, you know. I was a little perturbed about that at first, certainly because, you know, they said we are not trading Russell Wilson, period. And then they turned around and they traded him. So, you know, to me, that was that was a little bit of a, um, I don't know, it just to me, it seemed a little low. Um, but, you know, it is business. And so that's what you get, right? You know, it's it's all business in the end. And I guess you have to understand that and in a way respect it. 
So moving along, of course, everybody then turns their attentions toward uh, Deshaun Watson. So, you know, now Deshaun Watson is being heavily target, targeted by the Washington Commanders. You know, I made a video on this yesterday saying most certainly the Washington Commanders are going to be heavily targeting Deshaun Watson. It's a no-brainer. You know, Deshaun Watson is the last big name targeted quarterback, veteran quarterback out there because as of yesterday as well, the big news, not to be outdone by Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers signs this multi-year deal with Green Bay worth $200 million with $150 million of that guaranteed. Hi, Kirk Cousins. I mean, holy cow. 150 of that guaranteed and you know it was like a four or five year deal and this guy is going to be playing well within his mid 40s <clears throat> I mean you know Tom Brady did it so these other quarterbacks feel like they can Aaron Rodgers feels like he he can and so he's going to attempt it and so there you go and at 150 of that's guaranteed so, of course, Aaron Rodgers uh, was off the books, and a lot of people didn't really put a lot of stock into thinking that Aaron Rodgers was going to be uh, a viable option anyway. I know some people were hoping that maybe we could get Aaron Rodgers. I never really, you know, I don't even think I made a video thinking that we could get Aaron Rodgers. I just never even thought one iota that we would ever try to get Aaron Rodgers. We may have called Green Bay, and maybe we didn't. I don't know. <clears throat> but I don't think that that was ever an option. But uh, certainly Deshaun Watson, it seems like both the Washington Commanders and the Carolina Panthers are the two front runners. with the last I heard. The, of course, the Carolina Panthers being the ones who are the front runners to land Deshaun Watson. And you know, again, that has the, the Washington fans on Twitter um, all up in, in arms because they're like, why is it that the Washington Commanders are never the ones, you know, who are the favorites to land the veteran franchise quarterback? You know, the, the most coveted position in all of sports and certainly all of this franchise, even dating back to the glory years, this franchise has never really been able to land a franchise quarterback. You know, this franchise has won their Super Bowls with three different quarterbacks. We've never been able to go to multiple Super Bowls with the same quarterback. And you could even go back and argue, was Joe Theismann ever a franchise quarterback? You know, Mark Rippon, was he ever a franchise quarterback? Doug Williams was only on the team for like a couple of seasons. You can't really call him a franchise quarterback. So, you know, Washington has really, you know, the franchise quarterback has just eluded Washington for decades, decades upon decades. I, I, I would argue that you'd have to go back to the Sonny Jurgensen days to start saying that's when we had a franchise quarterback. And by saying all that, and don't get me wrong, I'm a, I love Joe Theismann. I grew up watching him, and so... I personally do consider him a franchise quarterback, but when you look at it, he didn't really play for Washington nearly as long as what these other franchise quarterbacks have been playing for their teams, right? So, you know, um, I would probably kind of consider him franchise quarterback, but others would, would argue that point. Having said that, getting back on track, um, you know, the most eluded position for this Washington team for decades and it seems like no matter what, we cannot get a franchise quarterback to save our lives. Even when we feel like we are developing a quarterback that we have drafted, and yes, I'm talking about Kirk Cousins. You know, Kirk Cousins was a solid quarterback. We can't deny that Kirk Cousins is a solid quarterback. He is a good quarterback, um, but we couldn't keep him because Kirk Cousins' number one goal is – to win money, right? To get that full guaranteed income. And he does not budge on that. That's when he does not, or that that's when he shows that he is not a team player. You know, he does not budge. He does not 
budge one iota when it comes to his contract. And so that's the reason why he left Washington. So, you know, we developed him into a good quarterback, and then he left. He left for the money. And now, you know, the Minnesota Vikings are dealing with all of that. And we have not been able to get a franchise quarterback since then. And we have tried. We tried to get Matthew Stafford last year. We offered a good amount for Matthew Stafford last year. And Stafford just flat out said he is not going to Washington. Russell Wilson has turned us down. Aaron Rodgers signed this big contract with the Green Bay Packers. And now Deshaun Watson, we're looking at him going, you know, please let his uh, legal issues get in your... I'm sorry, but I'm stuttering today. Let his legal issues get cleared up and so that we can really make a bid for him. But the thing is, things are running out of time. A, for the Texans to, to move him, they should have moved him last year. Uh, but things are kind of starting to get away from the Texans. They have, honestly, I think their uh, time to have moved him has moved on at this point because... On Friday, the grand jury will start to hear um, testimonies from Deshaun Watson's accusers, and um, this honestly, this is not good news because uh, Deshaun Watson was going to pick that Friday uh, for his depos- deposition. Instead, the uh, district attorney decided that is going to be the day that they bring in all of these witnesses or all these accusers to start sharing their testimonies. And um, this has indictment written all over it. Um, I would be extremely surprised if there are no criminal um, uh, charges brought against Deshaun Watson. Now, I am not a lawyer, but having kind of followed this a little bit and you know, kind of, you know, looked at what other attorneys and those who have practiced law have said. This all points to an easy indictment. And so if Deshaun Watson gets indicted, then that's pretty much it. You need to just really kiss Deshaun Watson goodbye as far as at least him playing in the NFL this year. It's not going to happen. If it gets any type of jail time, no. And this is the crazy thing. I, I've read some some fans, even despite all of that, said, well, even if he goes to jail, go ahead and trade for him. Even if we can't play him till 2024, it's still worth it. You know, bet the farm, get him, and then we'll have him. And I'm like, <laughs> are, are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? Why in in heaven's name would you do that? You're talking about three years that you would have to wait. And I'm saying three years because he didn't play in 2021. So technically, you you know, teams were waiting, you know, including the Texans for Deshaun Watson to, to play any football. And then he would not play in 2022, 2023. And he wouldn't be eligible. And that's just assuming that he would be out of jail at that point. And then you're thinking that, oh, he would go right back into the NFL and he would pick up where he left off in 2020. I mean, this is not Madden football, folks. This is a real human being. And anybody who is out of their sport for three or four years is not going to just suddenly go back into the sport and be the best in the league. It doesn't happen. And it would not happen with Deshaun Watson. I don't care how good of an athlete he is. And that's just just ignorance. You don't do that. You know, if he gets convicted of anything, um, he's likely going to jail. And an indictment this Friday pretty much means the Texans have totally missed out on their chance to trade him off. And for the Washington football team or Washington commanders and for any other team who are interested in Deshaun Watson, they have just dodged a huge bullet at that point because um, they would have taken a big expensive chance 
on a player that they would have never had the opportunity to have used. And then they would have set their franchise back several, several, several years. Because think about it. Not only do you not have that player that you just traded several first-round draft picks for, but now you don't have those draft picks for several years. So you're not just setting your, your team back you know, for two or three years while you're waiting on that player to get out of jail. You're also setting your team back another three or four years that you could use those draft picks. So you're, in all essence, you're setting your team back another six or seven years, almost a decade. And you, you're thinking it's worth it? No. No, that, that's stupid. That is dumb. You don't do that. So I think that teams are going to wind up realizing uh, while it's a high-risk, high-reward thing, I think the risk is going to be a little too high. Um, so they're going to have to, you know, Friday is going to be a pinnacle thing. If there is no indictment whatsoever, then you're going to see teams pounce and pounce hard. But if there is an indictment, it's done. And then if that's the point, then you're going to look at these teams fighting over who that they can draft in this year's draft. And quite frankly, um, you're looking at a lot of quarterbacks that a lot of the uh, talking heads have pretty much said, you know, these guys will be good in the future, but none of these guys are what you consider guys who can start right away. Um, it's just not a very deep draft for quarterbacks this year. And that's, uh, that's concerning as well. It really puts you in a position where this team, they're in a the bad position when it comes to quarterback. You know, you almost feel like you need to just stick with Taylor Heineke and say, you know what, let's use that 11th round pick, or let's use that 11th uh, pick in the first round for something else. You know, f uh, another receiver to go with Terry McLaurin. Let's roll with, with um, Taylor Heineke. Let, let's just say, hey, Terry, we're going to get your quarterback. We're trying our best. But, you know, the quarterback um, – draft is going to be much, much deeper next year. Better quality quarterbacks next year. We're going to be in an even better situation possibly next year to get a quarterback. Uh, these quarterbacks this year, you know, everybody is, is salivating over uh, Malik Willis, who quite frankly is probably going to be an expensive project. Um, you know, guys like Pickett are, are probably going to be a little bit more pro-ready. And you know, so those are guys you would probably pick. And if those guys are off the board by 11, I don't know what Washington honestly is going to do. Um, you know, we start to say, well, we're probably going to wind up going with Trubisky then. When well, now it's reported that Trubisky is going to possibly go and compete with Daniel Jones in New York on the Giants. So, now you don't have Trubisky, which a lot of people were kind of turn, turning their nose up at anyway. It could, it could possibly be that Washington winds up sending a second rounder to San Francisco for Jimmy Garoppolo. And, you know, a few weeks ago, my thought process was, well, if that's the worst case scenario, go ahead and get Jimmy. Let him compete with Taylor Heineke. You still have that 11th. You know, at least you have somebody who has Super Bowl experience, who has playoff experience. He's not the best quarterback, I would think, to, to get, you know, as far as competing with Taylor Heineke, but he is a good, solid quarterback. Um, he is not the tier quarterback like we were hoping to get with Russell Wilson or anybody like that, but, you know, that's not an option anymore. So maybe you do get Jimmy G, and then you draft one of these guys. And that might be the better scenario for us because then you can put that rookie on the bench and let him develop over a year, maybe give him some playing time here and there, but you're not having to put him into the fire. And then the only problem with that, of course, is this is year three of Ron Rivera. And if he starts feeling the seat getting very warm and very hot because the team is, you know, having yet another 
losing record. Maybe at that point they're two and six again and about ready to be eliminated from the playoffs once more. Then things are going to start getting panicky and you're going to see the team starting to go to these rookies and throwing them in there and who knows. So, folks, it really yesterday just turned our world upside down. Um, you know, Russell Wilson would have been the answer for this team. He would have turned this team into Super Bowl contenders. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. Um, that I really do believe we are a quarterback away. Yes, we still have some other pieces we need to fill, but having a franchise quarterback would have went a long way for this team. You just see it. I mean, basically we had a backup quarterback, and we went 7-10 and 10 last year with a backup quarterback. We had a guy like Russell Wilson last year. We would have been in playoffs easily. We would have won some of those games. And so I don't think this team is that far off. That is not rose-colored or burgundy and gold-colored glasses. Um, I, I think that is a true statement. But we're in a rough spot right now because we don't have what I consider franchise quarterbacks out there other than Deshaun Watson who we can get. And right now things are not looking good for Deshaun Watson. Really, they're not. Uh, Friday will, tell the, will really tell the tale what's going to happen. Um, if Friday things go sour for Deshaun Watson, then you're going to start to see attention uh, being turned toward uh, Mitch Trubisky, um, you know, Carson Wentz, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, and then, of course, um, you know, maybe Derek Carr if he's available, guys like that. And then, of course, certainly the draft. That's probably where we're going to wind up um, ultimately finding our next quarterback. That being said, folks, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please, again, consider uh, subscribing to this channel. Uh, like this channel or like this video, share it. Um, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about all of this. And with that said, let's go, Maniacs. I will see you in the next one. <laughs>